Hello, this is uh, Tuesday, June the uh, 18th, 2013, 2013, or whichever way you want to look at it. This is Reverend Dr. Robert L. McKim Sr. I'm coming to you again with some truth. See, I'm a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ and a prophet of the truth. Some people may differ about that prophet, but minister of the truth, prophet of the truth, whichever way you want to look at it, I'm the one to bring the true truth, the truth that Jesus Christ stood for and was crucified for, rose again on the third day for. Long story short, today I want to talk to you about the truth about marriage, marriage license, and the marriage license. A lot of people, a lot of preachers, a lot of Bible scholars that are on TV and uh, in churches are always saying, if you don't have a marriage license, then you're a sinner. Well, long before the 1990s, there was what was called the common law marriage. The common law marriage was what our country was founded on. All you had to do was to have your marriage recorded. That is all that was, was required, just to record your marriage. A lot of people didn't even go to the courthouse to record their marriage. They uh, record their marriages in, the, in their Bibles, in their family Bible. They recorded marriages and deaths and births in the family Bible. And that was a legal document. Nowadays, if you don't have a legal document, you can't even prove who you are. Because people will steal your identity in a heartbeat. Well, I'm me. Uh, as I was wanting to, as I'm wanting to say, it was real quick here. In uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 10 through uh, 14, in the Bible it says, To the married, Paul is speaking here, or writing, To the married, I give this command, not, not uh, I, but the Lord, a wife must not separate from her husband, But, be, but if she does, she must remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband, and the husband must not divorce his wife. But then he goes on and gives a reason, a good reason why people can separate and divorce. This is basically the only true reason why you can separate and divorce. Basically... Differences, believe in beliefs. To the rest, I say this: I not the Lord. This is his own words, his own uh, intellect coming out here. If any brother has a wife who is not a believer and she is willing to live with him, he must not divorce her. If a woman has a husband who is not a believer, and he is willing to live with her, she must not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through the wife, and the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her husband. Let's see, where was I? I lost my place. Has been sanctified through the, his wife. 
and an unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her unbelieving husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but as it is, they are holy. Now, here, here's the kicker. Here's where Paul says you can separate and divorce. But if the unbeliever leaves, let it be so. For the brother or sister is not bound in such circumstances. In other words, you're not bound to that marriage. You're not bound to that relationship. Because God has called us to live in peace. However, do, do you know, wife, whether you're, save your husband or... Do you know, husband, whether you will save your wife? In other words, it is up to us personally to accept Jesus Christ in our lives. We can't let it, leave it up to our husbands and our wives to save us. Our families are sanctified if we stay together, but if the unbeliever husband or wife doesn't want to change, doesn't want to you know, believe in Jesus Christ, then instead of fighting and bickering and arguing all the time about this, that, and something else, it's better to leave and divorce than to fight all the time. So, I wanted to show you something that I have found a long time ago was my great grandparents marriage license of course I have it here on my computer saved on my computer let me bring this up a little closer so you can see right here is the date when the judge signed this July A.D. 1896. Now, the funny thing is about this uh, marriage license. Woo! Wrong thing here. I uh, started... Uh, I don't know why that's on there. You know, for the... Uh, I want to bring it... Down here. If you look... At the marriage license here, let me bring this out a little bit more here where you can see the whole thing. The bottom portion of the marriage license that's usually cut off, or, or, or well, it's perforated, and you just tear it off and then send it to the courthouse or take it to the courthouse. That is still on there. The reason why it's still on there, and I'll tell you the reason why. Is because even back in the 1800s, after the Civil War, it was still only required to uh, record your marriage. You, you, P, another thing too is that everybody thought that you had to have a marriage license. Well, you didn't have to have a marriage license. Really, this is the only thing that you had to have was a marriage certificate. Here is a marriage certificate from, I found of course on the internet, from, uh, let me bring it up here where, uh, hopefully, I can, it, no, not working out the way I want it to. On the date here, I'm looking, um, Lord 1, yeah, 1,000, 18, let's see here again, there we go here, 1,800 and, looks like it says 74, in other words, 1874 is when this marriage certificate was uh, made, or this, these people got married, and all, that's all that was, was required was just a marriage certificate and you recording your marriage prior to the Civil War. Now, after the Civil War, 
then marriage laws have changed. The uh, government said, well, if a, you know, somebody of another race wanted to marry another person of another race, then it was okay if they get a marriage license. But if two people of the same race wanted to marry, you didn't have to get a marriage license. Excuse me, I'm going to put my uh, computer away here real quick because I am expecting to, for somebody to come and uh, take me uh, to see my uh, wife. She's in the uh, hospital in Altman in, up in Canton, Ohio. Long story short, I have what is called... Let me turn my thing around here. The uh, Black's Law Dictionary. This is a dictionary of laws. And in it, it states, right here, marriage certificate. An instrument which certifies a marriage. It is executed by the person officiating at the marriage. It is not intended to be signed by the parties, but is evidence of the marriage. Now a marriage license goes on here and says, a license or permission granted by public authority to Persons who intend to intermarry, usually addressed by the minister or magistrate who is to perform the ceremony, or in general terms, to anyone authorized to summonize marriages by statute in most jurisdictions. It is made an essential prerequisite to the lawful summonizing of marriage. Now, I looked up the uh, word uh, here of intermarry, and it sent me here to miscongeneration. Miscongeneration basically means a mixture of races term formally applied to marriage between persons of different races statutes prohibiting marriage between persons of different races have been held to be invalid in contrary to equal uh yeah prosecution clause of consideration long story short people marriage in the Bible has always been between a man and a woman not a man and a man and a woman and a woman man and a woman you cannot have two wives and you cannot have two husbands and you cannot have a woman saying she's a husband and you cannot have a man saying he's a wife it doesn't work that way period and the law says marriage license is only for people who intend to marry somebody of another race but if you are a born-again Christian, serving God, serving Jesus Christ, and you want to get married to somebody, all you have to do is have a marriage certificate. That is a legal document, according to the law dictionary. Preachers, teachers, politicians, stop lying I'm not fooled
Thank you. God bless.